Cool, yeah. So I'm Jake Taylor. I'm an engine developer at Fuse, uh, making a lot of this stuff do what it does. Um, and you're just going to see me kind of geek out here today uh, after a little bit of an introduction here. Uh, so when I talk about Fuse, I kind of like to talk a lot about uh, Fuse as a company. So we're based out of Oslo, Norway. And a bunch of us are just kind of geeky people who like to make cool stuff, especially visually oriented things. Uh, we have a pretty diverse background in things like chip design, uh, DSP, um, a lot of uh, mobile GPUs that are in a lot of the phones that you've had but never knew that came out of Norway actually comes from a lot of our guys. Um, just full of visually minded, you know, graphics technology kind of people. We like to do visual technical things, sometimes with limited hardware and sometimes with high-end hardware. Uh, basically anything in between, just because it's, it's just fun for us. This is the kind of things we like to do. Uh, and in particular, nowadays, uh, you know, people need to live. Uh, so what we do is we make app design and development tools, because this is an area where our expertise in terms of being you know, visually minded, very low-level technical people, um, this is a really good fit for us. So uh, why do we care so much about app development in particular? Um, a lot of apps, um, going to be a little opinionated here, but a lot of the apps that, that I look around and I see are pretty kind of sterile, thin clients to some back-end service somewhere. And it's, it's like, OK, we have all this data. We're moving it where we need to go. Uh, let's just do the presentation layer between you know, that and the user. And a lot of it is just not you know, as powerful as I think it probably could be. Um, I like to think that everyone walks around with the like, yesteryear's supercomputers in their pockets. Like we have multi-core machines, multiple gigahertz um, processors, uh, you know, several gigabytes of memory, and like, what are we using it for? Displaying a DOM? Like that's, I don't know, a little bit, I uh, feel like we could do a little more with that. So I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed when I see a lot of the apps these days. And we started looking at kind of why this is. Like we know what kind of technology we have, and we know the kind of things that people actually want to produce for their users. Like you have really strong brands uh, where the brand identity is extremely important to these people. And like why can't they communicate that effectively and just give you some you know, super thin client? And the problem, honestly, is just that app development's hard. Uh, tooling in tech is a huge bottleneck in creating rich and meaningful experiences in particular. A lot of these things are designed to you know, display maybe a date picker or something, but they're, they're not really designed to give you really interactive and really sort of animation focused uh, use cases. Uh, so this is the kind of thing that we actually want to wanna solve. Additionally, there's like a big spectrum between these really dev focused sort of IDEs uh, where, where a developer is just sitting there coding away on just piles of Java or Objective-C, uh, Swift nowadays, but still. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have a lot of these designer focused either like still picture tools like Photoshop or Sketch or, or prototyping tools like, like Figma or those, those kind of things. And it's like, do, as designers, do you actually want to make prototypes? Or is that just like what you are, like can do that works good with your team? You know what I mean? Like if you could just sit there and make the actual app, why would you want to make a prototype? Um, and the thing is that like, if you look at um, enterprise app development, there's like a six to one ratio in terms of demand versus supply, right? Uh, that's, that's a huge margin. And the, at the end of the day, if you can't work effectively, you can't address this kind of market demand properly. So I want to talk a bit about how we're sort of tackling this problem, right? So we see this, this problem where a lot of the tech, a lot of the tooling are really at the core of why this is hard and where we can sort of take our expertise and apply it to this problem. And one of the things I actually want to talk about is language design. So at Fuse, we're tackling this problem language first. And I'll get to that, what that means in a sec when I show you this and show you some of the tools we're building on top of that. I mean, we have a lot of tech at our company. Uh, but especially me as the engine developer, this is the part that I like to focus on because it's kind of where all of our tech meets at the middle and sort of the, the, the kernel of what, of what people using Fuse will, will sort of work with. Now, I want to say that creating a language, uh, when you hear the word language, especially at a conference like this, you're going to hear about like programming languages. And I want to kind of stress that it may look kind of like a programming language, but I don't like to think of it that way, right? Um, language is a domain thing, not a programming thing, right? We have mathematicians that use language to describe you know, relationships between numbers and sets and those kind of things. And it, it allows them to sort of frame like, the problems that they're looking at and the things they're looking at differently so they're able to find solutions. In the same way we have like, medical jargon or you know, even tech jargon in our, in our industry. And I like, I like this analogy that ideas, if ideas form trains of thought, language is sort of the tracks that the trains run on. Right? So if we're able to sort of describe the problem properly, the solutions become a lot easier to grasp and a lot you know, more interesting to us. So UX markup, uh, which is the thing that I'll be showing most today, uh, that's our language that we've created that's optimized for describing meaningful, animated, and performant UIs. 
So enough talking. You guys have heard my voice enough now. So let's kind of see what some of this looks like. Does that work? Great. Uh, so this is just a tiny amount of UX markup, and I'm just going to make some basic examples here that I think will demonstrate um, sort of the value here. Uh, so I'm going to use this screen to point out if that's all right with you guys. So I'm just going to start with things. How's the font size here, by the way? Could I bump this up, or are you guys good? Good? You guys in the back, good? OK. Uh, so what I have here is I just have an app tag here, right? So this, I'm making an app, right? Uh, I've got a couple colors here. We're going to ignore the notation on that. Just I got a color one, two, three. I'm going to be using those. Uh, I've got some text, and I've got a little simulator over here. Now, this could be a simulator. This could be a real device. Uh, at our booth, we've got a bunch of devices set up. We'd love to come see you guys after. It's like straight this way. I'll reiterate that at the end of the talk. Don't worry about that. Uh, and then I've just got a background gradient just because I like, I like little gradients. So first thing I'm going to do is just erase this text. And I'm going to make a pretty simple shape. Whoops, this should, there we go. Got to wake it up here. All right, so I'm just going to make a basic shape. I'm going to make a panel. And a panel is just sort of like the most basic thing that you can make here. I'm going to give this a width and a height. And I'm also going to give it a color. I'm going to give it color 3. Right? Now, when I save that, this is instantly updated, right? So we're already iterating. We're already going really, really fast here. Um, and again, if I had this on devices, you'd see it there, too. Uh, so what, now that I have this panel, there's not a lot that I can actually do with it. But what's a really common use case? I want to take this. Let's say this represents something with my logo. And when I press it, I want you know, an animation to happen. I want something interesting to happen. Uh, so let's take a simple case. Just say while this is pressed, right? We're going to do a couple things to this rectangle, and I love how this reads because it reads, you know, a lot like English text. So while my panel is pressed, let's go ahead and we're going to scale it. We're going to scale it by a factor of, for example, one wouldn't do anything that would be the same size it is already. Let's do 0.7. I can save that, and now when I click this, it actually scales. Now it's pretty instant here, right? So let's go ahead and add some duration to this, this change here. Make it, I don't know, 0.4 or something. Be a little under half a second. And now as I press this and release, then you can see it actually will grow and shrink. Now it's pretty, this is kind of a lame way to just shrink where it's sort of this linear animation. So we can actually change that by using some easing. So I can do easing is bounce out, for example. And watch what happens when I do this now. If I click this and I hold it, it's going to sort of bounce as it goes in. Nice and easy. Although when I let go, it's a bit weird because it's going to do this weird, like it's going to play this some animation, animation in reverse. Uh, but there's a really easy way to fix that. We can do easing back. And we're going to do bounce in, just sort of the opposite animation there. And now this actually starts to feel like something that's actually kind of nice, nice to touch. And I love this just because of how, how easy this stuff is to describe. And so if we take away the scale for a moment, I'm going to ignore the syntax here. We're just going to comment that out. Now when I click this, nothing happens. Uh, and I'm going to add a rotation. Uh, we'll rotate it here. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with the duration of 0 0.4. And instead of a factor, so we would scale by a factor, for example, we can rotate by a number of degrees. Let's do 45. And now this thing will also sort of turn on its side here. Very, very easy to describe. Now the cool part is that these things can actually stack. So I have my, it's a bit hard to, hard to point here, but I have my rotation here and the scale. If I bring this back, it's obvious that that's what's going to happen, right? Because it's so easy to read. Now there's some other things here that we can do. Uh, so I've actually made this, this whole panel here, this thing that, this rectangle that when I push it, you know, it shrinks and stuff. Uh, so I can actually make this a reusable component, right? So if I say UX class is my comp for my components, my thing, then later down here I can say my comp. And it looks the same, but what's actually happened is I've described a reusable component up here and then I've used it here. So we get the same results. Now, what's interesting is that if I have a component like this, I can also change properties on that component with the same animation. So for example, let's say I wanted to change its color while it's pressed as well. So I can, I can just write this. I'll change this component's color 
to color two. And with that same thing, I'll also add a duration. And when I press that, now we also get color changes. So it's, I mean, it's really basic stuff, but I like it because it's just so, you know, so composable and so, so intuitive what's going on here. Like if, if you think that, oh man, this is, this is so easy, that's actually the benefit here. Like it's, it's hard, to, hard to describe how hard some of this really basic stuff is in a lot of other tool chains. But I'm sure those of you guys who have tried to use these have, have experienced that firsthand. So what I want to do with this is I want to take it a, uh, like one step further, because as I'm sitting here playing with this, I'm thinking, you know, there, I think there's a cool animation in here, like a transition kind of animation. Uh, so it, instead of like if this were a rectangle, if I had like pages and I could go between them and display kind of the same sort of animation, I think that'd be pretty cool. So I'm going to remove the width and height on this. And now this just takes up the whole screen. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this already, I think. Uh, so I'm going to put this component in a page control. And I'm going to make a couple more of these too. And now if I start dragging, you can see there's several of these. But this hasn't actually made the transition. This just makes several of those pages where they all have that animation. So we're going to take it one step further. So instead of while pressed, we're going to call this exiting animation. And I'm just going to remove the durations because we're not going to need those. Reduce some clutter. And I'm going to do one more thing with entering animation. So basically when pages are, are when it's going off the screen, we're going to do this sort of scaling thing that you see first. And when it's coming on the screen, we're going to do this move here. I'm going to type a bit here relative to size. X is negative 1. And I'm also going to disable the default transition on this. We'll just gloss over that one. And so what this is going to show is that as I'm sort of going between pages, the top one is going to move based on its size to the left. And the bottom one is going to do that scaling animation along with the color change, just like that. So now, now that I have this working, I think I'm going to tweak this a little bit. Like, let's remove the color change. It's a bit hard to see the difference between the pages. And we'll stick the color on the different components down here. Color one, two, three, for example. Now you can see this is starting to work pretty nicely as well. Uh, and let's add something else too. Let's go ahead and add a blur to this. If I just stick a blur on my component, you can kind of just see it on the edges, but these are actually blurred now. Uh, and just like a Gaussian blur, like in Photoshop, we can adjust how blurry it is with the radius. Five minutes, yeah. So let's go ahead and change that to like 20, for example, to really exaggerate that effect. Now, just like the, the property stuff that I changed before, we can actually do the same thing with this property. So we'll give this blur a name. Oops, blur. And as it's exiting, we're going to change the blur radius to, whoops, to, for example, 20. And we're going to make it default 0. And now when I move this, it almost looks like sort of a depth of field kind of effect. Especially with the scaling, it gives that kind of almost 3D effect. So now, now I, think, I think this is an OK transition. I think this is kind of what I was after here. And it's very easy to get there from my basic rectangle example. But the cool thing here is that I can take some other pages that I've already made. So I'll just take my components here and just open them up so I can put some stuff in there. And now what I'm going to do is just add some components inside these. right? So I have this um, infinite scroll example. And I've got a complex layout example here. And when I save that, these pictures will load. So this is a basic sort of infinite scroller. And when you click these, it just changes the layout just for a case to test with. Now when I go between these, you can see these same transition effects also apply and compose with fully made pages, including things like video, data, all that other stuff. All works totally, totally seamlessly. So I think that's pretty rad. And it's, it's fun to stand up here and do this, because it, to me, it just feels like I'm just playing with this stuff. I really, really like doing this. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to my slides here. 
one at a time. <clears throat> so here I've explored some basic examples, uh, but they were also real examples. Like this is something I would put in an actual app. The thing I'm making here is not a prototype. This is like actual native code uh, that runs on your device. So I could export this to the App Store today. Um, and it may not go to the App Store for another week or so, but you know, I could put it on there today. Uh, and there's a ton of stuff I haven't mentioned. Like we have visual tooling on top of this that just edits the same language you have here. So this is sort of the where everything meets in the middle. We have a, you know, a, our own app like platform underneath this. We also play nicely with other platforms. Um, really great stuff. If you guys are really curious about this, uh, we have our booth just straight that way. Would love to talk to you guys further. Um, so yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Thanks again, guys, for coming. And if you have any questions, let's do it. All right. Another hand of applause to uh, Jake. Uh, we're going to open it up really quick before you guys leave. Uh, well, I guess if you guys want to leave, but we'll open it up for Q&A if you guys want to have any other questions. But before you do leave, please fill out the surveys. Uh, again, if you guys have any uh, last minute questions you want to ask Jake, uh, please do so now. If not, uh, you know, don't forget to, uh, oh, there we go. We got a question right here. Oh. Yeah, so the question is, it's like Android and iOS support now? Support for Tizen soon? Uh, we don't currently have support for Tizen. Uh, we can talk more about that at the booth. Uh, but yeah, Android and iOS currently. Anybody else? Any curiosities? Any app developers in here? Any designers? What do you guys thought about that? Uh, we got a question over here. So what's it translated down into? Uh, so the question was, what is it translated down into? So we have our own stack that actually runs these primitives, our own, our own engine that's based on OpenGL. Uh, so it's as low level and performant as we could possibly be. So it, what it gets translated to is something like basically C++ that instantiates these same components. So yeah. Cool. Very Great. performant. Great question. Anybody else? Last minute? OK. I think that would be, uh, that'd be it. Oh, one more? Uh, oh. I can talk to you over there, but it's a global question. In terms of um, keeping your strings in the file and like, uh, data Yeah, so putting data in the app is essentially the question. Like, what is. Yeah. So are you asking, like, do we have solutions for this? Because the, the short answer is, of course, yes. <laughs> We can, we can talk more at the booth. I'd love to. Yeah. Any more takers? Any more questions? Cool. All right. So, oh, no. It's just a photo op there. <laughs> photo op. Photo ops are good too. If you guys want to do any more photo ops before you guys leave, <laughs> any selfies, be you're more than welcome. <laughs> Go for it. All right. Cool. One more, one more hand. Uh, a round of applause for Jake. Thank you guys so much. Yeah.